Hello investors, welcome to this new video of scientific investing and today we will be talking about chemical industry and this has been one industry which created a lot of wealth in last decade and especially uh, you know after COVID uh, for next one and a half years but after that this sector has gone under a lot of correction many stocks are down by 40, 50, 60 percent most of the businesses have taken a big hit because of margin, inventory and all sorts of issues. And uh, this is one industry where I see that, you know, everybody is waiting, uh, you know, for another round of big money to be made. Uh, so I thought I will touch upon something about this industry. And before talking about a specific company, I would like to highlight the process, how I shortlisted this company because the key insight, key message lies in the framework and the process and companies are just outcome. So let me highlight that. Standard disclaimer, I am a CV registered research analyst. I do have position in some of these stocks I'm talking about. So please take this video more to learn about the business, not as a buy or sell recommendation. Post this, use this learning, but do your own analysis, post this and or consult your financial advisor and take your own uh, decision. We are not making any buy or sell recommendation. So in chemical, uh, the specific segments which creates the biggest interest is specialty chemical. So what is special about specialty chemical? Now, let me highlight a very, very important data. What I have in this chart is some of the most popular companies uh, which created a lot of wealth, which were supposed to be businesses with moat, which were supposed to be specialty businesses and whatnot. But let us see what has happened to these companies in last two years as post-COVID, post-2021, the margins peaked out and the industry issues started because of oversupply, China issue and whatever. One common thing, if you look across all these companies in last two years, most of these companies have gone through a margin fall. If you look at Deepak Nitride, this is Deepak Nitride. If you look at uh, Arti Industries, uh, this is Arti Industries. If you look at Alkyl Amine, this is Alkyl Amine. Neogen, most of the companies, some of the newly listed companies, they were touted as, uh, you know, specialty chemical, uh, but they have also gone Jubilant in Gravia, Lakshmi Organics, uh, the... Uh, duopoly amines, Balaji amine and Arti amine, everybody has fallen. There are two, three companies where the margin fell by very, very small amount. One was SRF and one Naveen fluoro fluorine. Uh, if you see, uh, this is uh, Naveen fluorine and then this is era SRF. You can see the fall of the margin has been minimal and in Naveen it didn't fall. However, there is one company which is in the black dotted line where actually the margin has not at all fallen and the margin has gone up. And right from 2017 to 20, if you see the margin was almost maintained and then the margin has kept going up whereas for the overall industry, the margin has been significant pressure. So there are two, three questions. One. What is special about this company? Why the margins went up? Second question, what is special about uh, companies like SRF and Naveen Fluorine? Why they are able to better retain the margin? And third, why certain companies operate at a very high operating margin and why certain companies operate at a very low operating margin and why certain companies have gone from high operating margin to low operating margin? So if you see, there are different uh, definitions of what is a specialty chemical uh, based on the domain, uh, you know, companies which, uh, you know, create more value added products uh, where they sell on, uh, you know, low volume, high value, all these are definition. But mind you, this is an industry which is one very, very complicated industry, the chemical industry, it is not as simple as that. Any industry where there's a global equation, there's a global demand supply for us retail investors, it is very difficult to build, uh, you know, a very good perspective with first-hand information. Because in China, what happens in China? I know last time, when I know, I know, the price is finished. 
तो फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन अंडरस्टैंड दिस इज अ कॉम्प्लेक्स इंडस्ट्री दिस इज अ कॉम्प्लिकेटेड इंडस्ट्री देर टू मेनी मूविंग पार्ट्स देर टू मेनी रिस्क लीवर्स वी शुड ऑलवेज बी यू नो कॉशस इन सच इंडस्ट्रीज इन टर्म्स ऑफ आवर स्टडी टेकिंग पोजिशन एंड स्पेशली वेन यू नो देर इज लॉट ऑफ होप और यूफोरिया दिस इज वॉट विल सेव अस बिकॉज वेन we have not done our study properly there are chances always of accident so remember that now coming to specialty chemical so i'll keep the domain uh, definition aside because how should we understand all of that that itself is a uh, you know a topic in itself but most of the times ultimately everything gets reflected in finance and the numbers itself are reflection of whether they are specialty or not my understanding is most of the real specialty chemical companies one they will mostly operate at a little higher margin and two they will have a better bargaining power and hence their margins relatively which will be much more stable than the other companies so when you see a company on low margin and highly volatile margins whatever management say it's very difficult to tag them as a specialty chemical company and especially again be cautious in this sector companies which don't have history it's very difficult to understand whether they are specialty or not because only when you look at the historical margin and the consistency and the uniformity of margin then only we can have some confidence i'm not telling they will be specialty chemical in fact a few days back i made a tweet that yesterday's specialty is today's tomorrow's commodity and that is how the industry has gone so even if it has been a specialty company it may not guarantee that tomorrow also it is going to be specialty but as of today companies with higher margin less volatility uniformity in uniformness in margin they are the companies uh, which uh, might end up having that specialty tag when you try to understand the domain and srf navin fluorine they have been able to do that but i was more particular about this company which is in black dotted line because it is there in one of the lower margin range but despite of that it was stable my hunch was if company is having a lower margin it's not specialty it's commodity and as there will be a you know a demand supply pressure and testing time this company should also have broken like any other company and lost its margin but it didn't happen so why it didn't happen it was a very very important question uh dear friends and especially those who are living in bangalore uh mission smile and scientific investing we have started uh bangalore monthly investing meetups where we do physical meetings uh we discuss about investing stock sector stock market and last month uh, we had a very good first meetup uh, where almost 105 uh, friends joined and we had a good four hour uh, interesting dis uh, discussion so if you are in bangalore and you want to be a part of a investing community where you are a part of these kind of meeting meeting with peers like minded folks discussing networking learning uh, we have this month monthly meetup coming on 28 so do uh, register and sign up the link is there in the uh, registration link is there in the comment section i am trying to highlight the same here if you see deepak nitrite 29% to 15% RT Industries twenty two percent to sixteen percent, Alkyl Amine thirty five percent to nineteen percent. These are operating margins. Neogen nineteen percent to sixteen percent. Jubilant in Gravia just four year of history. Uh, of course, post listing else you know it was part of another business seventeen to eleven percent. Balaji Amines twenty nine percent to twenty three despite a duopoly. Lakshmi Organic another newly listed company twelve percent to eight percent. Vinati very good company but this also has gone through margin correction twenty sir thirty seven percent to twenty nine but despite of that a very high margin business relatively. Navin Fluorine this has also gone in fact uh, only uh, last two years still it is stable but from the peak of forty this has also fallen twenty nine percent so again a high margin business but let me admit this has also gone through some correction. SRF is one company where if you see from peak twenty five to twenty three, this is like very normal one two percent kind of margin fall, and it has been able to protect it its ground. Uh, Deepak Fertilizer so far only two three percent fall, and uh, you know before the fall also there was a rise in margin. So this has been relatively more stable. 
and galaxy surfactant which has gone under margin pressure so it's not like it has not gone under margin pressure but right now the margin seem to be improving when whether for everybody else or for many of them it is not yet improved so when i was looking i was trying to make a list of companies what i can study because this is a new sector to me i have never analyzed this sector some of these companies looked interesting and the most interesting was this company which didn't go under any margin for right from FY21 and margin has well, only gone up uh, from 12% to 15% to 17%. So the yellow one and the green one were quite interesting to understand why these companies have been resilient or shown some kind of odd behavior or a uh, kind of outlier behavior with a margin increase. Then I try to look at the valuation because all said and done, good money is made only when we buy things attractive. If we buy things uh, at a very costly price, still we may end up making money, we may end up compounding, but the probabilities are not in our favor. There is more element of luck than skill when we buy things higher. We need to be much, much, much sure. So I always try to look for companies which are attractively valued. And again, luckily, when I looked at uh, Vishnu Chemical, the company which has continuously shown margin improvement, a typical outlier behavior, this was the second cheapest stock. Of course, we cannot measure valuation just by taking a number like EV EBITDA because the business quality matters. But we need to start somewhere uh, without concluding that, you know, this is justified. And this company again looked almost the second cheapest. So the question was, is it worth, you know, exploring this business because there is some outlier behavior, it looks like there is some margin of safety. And when I looked at the detailed numbers, uh, look from 480 to 500 to 643 to 773, uh, 70, this was one bad year because everybody was disrupted because of COVID. And then again, there has been significant improvement from 670 to 1100 to 1400. And this is where we are. Some sales pressure is there on TTM basis and margin improvement here. Of course, the company worked on a higher margin, which went down. But then last six, seven years has, have been very, very good. If you look, profit has gone from 7 crore to 131 crore. And it's not only the PNL. Actually, there has been significant balance sheet improvement. Uh, the debt equity has fallen from 3.3 to almost 0.7 right now, which looks quite healthy. And it's not only the accounting profit. If we look at the cash flow conversion, this is also very decent, whatever time frame we look three year, five year, uh, you know, eight year. And when we look at the valuation, of course, there has been a little bit of re-rating. Earlier, this stock used to trade around 7.5. And now this is trading around 10, which is quite obvious given this performance and the kind of balance sheet improvement which has happened. But still at a 9, 10 EV beta, this is one of the cheapest stock available. Now, this is the framework I followed for identifying companies, understanding, uh, you know, what is specially just have a bird's eye view, do a quick two, three hour analysis, understand uh, which companies look interesting in the current market, differentiated, is there opportunity? I can't study all the 20 companies. If I have to study those two, three companies, which are going to be those two, three companies, and this is where uh, I found companies like, uh, you know, SRF, uh, Galaxy, Deepak Fertilizer, Vishnu worth interested, interesting to study. And then looking at the valuation, I ended up studying Vishnu in detail. My study is still going on, but this is how I identified Vishnu chemicals. So I hope this framework helps you because uh, company at the end, one company analysis is one company analysis, but when you have the framework, you can identify companies on your own and you can analyze companies on your own, whether today or tomorrow or after one year. So I hope this framework was useful and I would like to know what is your view on Vishnu Chemical and do you think this is a company worth analyzing? Do you want me to discuss this company in detail in the next video? If yes, uh, why you feel so? If no, why you feel so? Is there any other company in this list which you felt is interesting? But don't write only the name, write some line about why you feel this is interesting. And then I will cover, uh, maybe I will cover Vishnu or I find there is something which is much interesting based on your comments, then I might end up presenting that also. So I hope this video was useful and uh, we will meet again soon with the next video. Thank you.
if you like our content uh, do like do subscribe uh, do pass it to your friends so that we can reach out to more and more people and we can make more such videos